Welcome back to our channel Skillabiz 10. This video is third part of uh, the exam prep series Azure Fundamentals AZ900 exam. So we recently discussed about the different products and services that we get from Microsoft Azure as part of the compute offering. So we might get a few questions like how we are going to discuss now in real exam. So we might have to uh, test our uh, understanding of uh, each of the Azure compute related uh, products and services. So let's go and uh, see some sample questions on how we might get it in uh, the exam. So we might have to differentiate what are these different services are uh, providing us as a kind of offering. So the first one Azure functions, right? Uh, we have discussed about it. So this is a kind of uh, serverless compute offering where uh, the Azure functions can trigger the application code or the automation code when there is an event happening. So when there is a new file coming in or when there is a new uh, activity or event happening, this Azure functions can help us to run the application code or the code pertaining to an automation without have without we having to provision our virtual machine or operating system or underlying infrastructure. So Azure function it, it provides uh, a platform for executing the serverless code so we can just drag and drop it here so in the exam you might have to drag and drop to the answer area so azure application service you know um, this is used for developing uh, the web application mobile application for any platform or any device right and you can connect to any and you can connect to the data from any web from the cloud or from the on-premises so app services includes the web and mobile capabilities that uh, were previously part of the azure websites or azure mobile services now azure app service it is uh, going to provide you the platform to build deploy and scale web application so we might have to drag and drop this to here azure app service so the next one is Azure Virtual Machine. You know this is the virtualization um, uh, at the uh, at the operating system level. We have the virtual machine created for us. So this provides you operating system virtualization. So where is the last one we have got? is container instance so you know that with container we generally package deploy and manage the cloud application and azure container instance uh, is the offering through which you can deploy uh, the applications containerized application in the fastest and simplest way so azure container service a container instance is the platform where uh, you can get a lot of uh, significant uh, um, startup benefit uh, and you can start the Azure containers in seconds and you don't have to provision any kind of VMs or nothing is needed so it's like a doc docker as a service where you can just directly go and uh, deploy your containerized or virtualized application so the answer is Azure container instances so let's move on to the next question the company would like to develop a cloud solution by making use of Azure government Azure government can only be used by certain type of client to develop cloud solutions. So we are no, we are aware of that, right? So Azure has got multiple different uh, uh, cloud options. One of them is uh, Azure UK, I mean Azure US government cloud, where uh, it is mainly used by the government entities, uh, government contractors in uh, the United States, right? And uh, similarly, Azure has got a separate private cloud or uh, a community cloud, community cloud in Azure China, Azure Germany, and so on. So which of the following are the types of customers? that can make use of the Azure government in this situation so a government contractor from any country so these are the options that we have got so this cannot be used by any country because it is uh, um, restricted only to be uh, used by uh, the US government based contractors and uh, the government entity a government entity from any country so this is also a wrong answer an European government contractor no this is also a wrong answer so this particular um, uh, question I think uh, United States government contractor yeah they are definitely eligible for uh, United States government contractors so they are definitely eligible to uh, use this particular uh, make use of the Azure government cloud and uh, the second option is an United States government entity so definitely the government entity uh, can uh, definitely make use of the Azure uh, US government uh, cloud, right? So this is a very pretty straightforward option and Azure web application is uh, running on Azure platform. So it, it is clearly stated that it is an Azure web application. The front end is on Azure platform and it is trying to query the 
on premises microsoft sql server so it is going to access the database hosted on the on premises so they're asking us what is this combination called so this combination is called hybrid cloud okay so it's a mix of the front end in um, public cloud azure and uh, the back end is in database because the data is very sensitive and uh, we might we have to host it on on the premises in many of the customer environment so this model is called hybrid environment model or hybrid cloud model so here the, this question talks about the company has some uh, has an on premises network that contains multiple server fine and they are telling like they are currently doing a lot of administrative work like backing up uh, fixing the issues on the failed hardware they are uh, taking care of the physical server security updating the operating systems and so on so they are trying to migrate the virtual machines or the azure uh, the servers to azure vms okay so this is the first thing that they are doing you need to identify which administrative responsibilities will be eliminated after we migrate to microsoft azure virtual machine so that is what they are trying to understand so they are currently doing these tasks in their on premises data center and they are asking us what are the different uh, stuffs uh, that will uh, go out of the customer's responsibility when we migrate our vms to azure virtual machine so replacing the failed server hardware after migration to azure vm yeah this will be microsoft uh, responsibility so they are uh, providing you the services so anything at the infrastructure level because this is infrastructure as a service right azure virtual machine is nothing but infrastructure as a service so infrastructure as a service means the and the underlying infrastructure right uh, you are um, uh, the data center level of uh, server related activities or uh, anything to do with the uh, physical data center it is being serviced by microsoft and that's why it is called as infrastructure as a service so backing up application data so uh, at the application layer microsoft have no control over the application you run on the virtual machine so it is customer's responsibility so whoever is running the application so the customer has to take care of the application backup managing physical server security yeah definitely the physical servers security is being uh, handled by uh, microsoft so we don't have to really worry about the physical server level security updating the server operating system yeah definitely customer has uh, the access uh, they have to take care of the uh, os upgrade or the os updates on a reg regular uh, basis like if it is windows we do it on a monthly basis managing permissions to share documents definitely like uh, this is going to be uh, the permissions will generally be taken care by the customer right so they have asked us to choose two responsibilities that will be taken away from um, the customer so yeah this opportunity is going um, to microsoft so we can um, eliminate this particular administrative responsibility from the customer and the second uh, thing is like managing the physical server security can also be eliminated after we migrate to azure vm so these two options will be taken care by microsoft after we migrate the server to azure vm you plan to provision infrastructure as a service resources in azure which resource is an example of infrastructure as a service so azure web app is an example of platform as a service so this is not the right answer azure virtual machine is a example of infrastructure as a service so uh, this could be the right answer and uh, an azure logic app yeah definitely it is platform as a service and azure database again it is also a platform as a service offering so the answer is azure virtual machine is the right answer so these are all uh, not correct because they are all platform as a service offering from um, microsoft so they have asked us to choose the infrastructure as a service resource in this particular uh, list of options so uh, the next question is okay i've got two questions the questions might uh, come in in uh, in a different format like they might ask which service provides serverless computing in azure in, in other words they might ask which of the following runs application code in azure without requiring a server so both of them are talking about serverless so uh, the answer should be azure functions right without even looking at uh, the list of options we can decide on this particular thing but still like uh, we have to check the azure vm yeah we need to take care of uh, the virtual machine so it is not the right answer in azure storage account also it is infrastructure as a service we need to take care of the infra and sorry the storage and azure dedicated host yeah we need to take care of the server here also so answer is azure function 
So in exam, the question might be in a different format. They might ask without requiring a server or provide serverless computing. So both of them uh, corresponds to the same answer. To complete the sentence, select the appropriate option in the answer area. So you have to go and uh, select the answer from the drop down menu. When you, when you need to delegate permission to several Azure Virtual Machines simultaneously, you must deploy the Azure. So you are planning to deploy multiple Azure Virtual Machines in Azure platform. And when you want to delegate permission to all of them together, it is good to combine them. Okay, so if you are combining them in the same Azure region, so we are just adding it in the uh, location. Uh, that doesn't help us to uh, uh, delegate the permission initially. So uh, the next option is by using the same Azure Resource Manager template. So we can standardize and uh, create the same size uh, set of uh, configurations or uh, we can uh, follow the same set of uh, uh, standards when you are deploying it through the template but it is not going to help us with delegating the permission so if we are deploying it to the same resource group yeah that can help us to get the permission sorted out in an easier way so to the same resource group should be the right answer in this particular question so the next one if you are putting it in the same availability zone means you are creating the server in the same data center that doesn't help us to uh, delegate the permission uh, in an easier way right so the next question is you need to note you need to be notified when microsoft plans to perform maintenance that can affect the resources deployed to an azure subscription yeah this is a pretty straightforward uh, question so if you uh, log into your azure platform and if you go to service health dashboard you can see there is a menu called plan maintenance so this is where microsoft will alert us when there is a um, uh, performance uh, when they are performing the maintenance on their data center so the answer is azure service health is the right option where uh, Microsoft will notify us if there is a planned maintenance in the data center. And uh, uh, you have to look at uh, if there is any communication uh, in, in uh, I mean, about the outages or planned maintenance activities or any, any other health advisories uh, under the service health experience. This is where you get to know about the services and resources we are currently using and it will which are the ones which will get impacted when Microsoft is doing a planned maintenance. So service health is the right answer. So we have discussed multiple questions similar to this. So there are certain uh, series of questions that you might expect in Azure fundamental exam and these questions you have to answer it there only because you cannot go and uh, review them later and uh, you will not get option to review uh, uh, to return to it. So try to answer the series of questions in that particular uh, um, time itself. You will not get a option to review those again okay you will not be able to return to those questions in the review section okay so let's see your company plans to migrate all of its data and resources to azure so the company's migration plan states that only platform as a service solution must be used in the solution is what they are asking so let's go and eliminate uh, some of them so azure virtual machine is a infrastructure as a service so this cannot be a right answer and azure storage account is again infrastructure as a service it cannot be a right answer so Azure VM again infrastructure as a service not right answer Azure storage account is also infrastructure as a service not right answer So these are the two services which are uh, definitely under uh, falling under your uh, platform as a service So you can um, select this as yes, so this does meet meet the goal uh, Where uh, the customer can migrate and uh, use only pass offering So this does not meet the goal this does not meet the goal and even this does not meet the goal of platform as a service so similar question your company's developers intend to deploy a large number of custom virtual uh, machines on a weekly basis they will also be removing these uh, virtual machines during the same week it was deployed okay so this is like more more like developers they want to create a lot of virtual machines which are custom in nature and they, they want to remove it immediately the same week they are not planning to run it for a longer time and they are saying the 60 percent of the vms are windows 2016 and the rest 40 percent are ubuntu linux right so they we have to uh, give them the option which is uh, which helps them to uh, uh, reduce the administrative effort and uh, they also want a particular uh, uh, solution which can be much appropriate see generally azure reserved instances are recommended for uh, 
the systems or application that you want to run for a longer duration like for one year or three year or uh, more with the uh, microsoft azure so this is not going to help us with this particular uh, requirement you recommend the use of azure dev test lab it looks like a good answer because uh, they, this is like more developers want to create some vms and then they want to delete create and remove them uh, immediately right so this can be a good option and again uh, azure dev test lab it provides you a lot of uh, options like pre-configured bases uh, you can also use uh, arm templates and uh, there are a lot of options uh, reusable templates and artifacts that you can uh, use for quickly provisioning the windows and linux environment it is much much quicker to deploy in dev test lab plus you also have an option to integrate with the deployment pipeline so that can also provision the on-demand environments very quickly so this is going to help you and microsoft managed and des desktops is more or less uh, a kind of uh, vda solution desktop solution so it is not uh, going to help us here and uh, we also have this um, azure virtual machine scale set this is auto scaling so auto scaling is uh, helpful for uh, adding more machines and reducing them when the demand is increasing and when the demand is decreasing so it will automatically scale out and scale in the virtual machine so the question here is they want to have some development vms so the developers want to have some custom vms created on a weekly basis and they want to remove it immediately so i should dev test lab only looks uh, uh, like a good choice here so it's almost the same question. So a team of developers, they want to deploy and remove 50 custom virtual machines on a on an immediate basis. So definitely Azure Dev Test Lab is the right option. So you might also get it in uh, the series of questions, the same question, or you might also get it in a multiple choice uh, like that. You attempt to create several managed Microsoft SQL Server instances in an Azure environment and you receive a message that you might increase your Azure subscription limit. So whenever we are reaching the limits of uh, the subscription or any particular resource stuff, we have to create a support request with Microsoft. So they will help us to increase the uh, limit and uh, allow us to create uh, more systems, uh, um, more systems there. Right, so the, the other options are like uh, this is for creating a health alert when there is any service related issues or uh, you generally go and upgrade your support plan if you are expecting better uh, support SLA from uh, Microsoft or if you are expecting better architectural support or uh, better um, um, resolution SL, sorry, response SLA, you go for a higher plan. But here uh, it's just about increasing the limit where uh, we are not able to create SQL Server instances in Azure environment and uh, we can go and create a support request if an azure virtual machine has a stopped state as a state of stopped deallocated status then you will continue to pay for which of the following yeah so when the virtual machine is already stopped and deallocated we don't have to pay for cpu memory so compute capacity is not the right answer and uh, you don't have to pay for the networking because the system is already down and uh, there won't be any networking traffic and when the system is down there won't be any input I, I there won't be any io operations also so we are good there so only storage is the uh, option where you have to continue to pay because you are occupying their uh, uh, data center storage and uh, for the capacity you are consuming you have to pay per gb right so storage cost will continue to be applicable even when the virtual machine is in stopped state for each of the following statement you have to select yes or no based on the statements okay so let's go and read the statement azure virtual desktop sessions host can run um 20 windows 10 only no it's not the case you can run uh, windows 10 you can run windows 11 you can also have uh, windows uh, uh, server operating system also so this is not the right statement azure virtual uh, desktop host um pool that include 20 session hosts support a maximum of 20 simultaneous no you can have multiple uh, sessions multi-user so each host can have more than uh, uh, one or two users so uh, it's not like one is to one so this is also not the right answer the right statement uh, azure virtual desktop support desktop and app virtualization yeah that is correct so you can also do uh, a vda solution as well as you can also have a application virtualization on azure virtual desktop avd you have an azure environment that contains 10 applications 10 web application to which url should you connect to manage all the azure resources so to manage azure resources you have to log into portal.azure.com so some people will say www.azure.com so that is not the right answer so it's a tricky question but uh, it's a straightforward question as well if you are regularly logging into azure um, 
platform azure portal for managing azure resources you might have already got familiar it is https portal.azure.com so you have to select portal in the first drop down and azure in the second drop down hotspot uh, to complete the sentence select the appropriate option in the answer area so you can access the compliance manager uh, So it is called purview so you can access it from the azure portal itself. So the answer is uh, azure portal is the right answer and uh, you can access it from uh, Access the compliance manager from azure portal. So thank you for uh, listening